Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. In today's video, I'm going to review the enclosures sent to me by Tarantula Cribs. A few months ago, I watched a video on the Tarantula Collective's channel. Richard was unboxing some enclosures from Tarantula Cribs, and the thought came to me. Not only do these enclosures look really sharp and well made, I bet they work really well as display enclosures for isopods and lots of other invertebrate species. I contacted Tarantula Cribs and they were kind enough to send me four sizes of enclosures to try out. Number one, the spiderling enclosure. Number two, the small slider crib. Number three, the medium slider crib. And number four, the large slider crib. In the spiderling enclosure, I didn't put any isopods as it was too small, but I have used it as a temporary holding container for a young centipede, and I will very likely use it as a temporary display container during my invertebrate presentations. And if I ever get a facility separate from my house so that I'm allowed to keep a tarantula, I could use it for what it is primarily intended for, a very young spiderling. In addition to uh, tarantula spiderlings, I imagine this would be a great enclosure for a small juvenile scorpion, as well as a variety of other tiny creatures. With the addition of a simple molting platform, it would make a great home for a young mantis, for example. In the small slider crib, I set up my small rubber ducky colony. A few months later, the colony had grown quite a bit. I estimate I had somewhere between 30 and 50 rubber duckies in there. I have now moved them into the next largest tarantula cribs enclosure, and I have put my new Porcellionides prunosus orange crumble starter colony in the small slider crib. In the medium slider crib, I had previously housed my Porcellionides prunosus oreo crumbles. They absolutely flourished in there. The only reason I moved them out was that the colony was getting too big. This bold active isopod is a great choice for an enclosure like this, as it really allows you to view them with minimal disturbance. In the large slider crib, I put some Porcelio lavis milk back, as they are also a pretty visible and active species. This has worked out really well. Feeding the milk backs in this enclosure is particularly entertaining. So, now that I've tried these enclosures out for a few months, let me tell you what I think. First, I'll tell you what I love about these enclosures. The quality. This is thick, durable, very clear acrylic. The craftsmanship is excellent, and they have such a clean look to them. The design. These enclosures, being designed primarily for tarantulas, are built to prevent escapes. Now, I can't be sure without a lot of testing, but I don't think a centipede is going to be able to open that door any more than a tarantula would. The magnets, intended to hold the lids tightly closed, do exactly that, and in all but the smallest of these four enclosures, the sliders add extra security. When the door is properly shut, nothing is really getting in or out of these enclosures unless it can fit through the vent holes, and more on that later. The variety of sizes of these enclosures mean you can find something to suit just about any invertebrate. Many of the available models are also stackable. Now let's talk about the ventilation. Okay, some isopod keepers probably see the vent holes on these enclosures and think, those are big enough to allow fungus gnats to get in. This is true. Frankly, however, over time, I have not noticed any more issues with fungus nets in these enclosures than I have in six quart sterilite tubs with mesh covered ventilation. If you ask me, I think the ample cross ventilation in the tarantula cribs enclosures may actually reduce the stagnant conditions that fungus nets favor. So what are the disadvantages to an enclosure like this? In my opinion, the only downside to a tarantula crib is the cost. These enclosures are significantly more expensive than most enclosures used for isopods. But that's it. If you want a purely functional enclosure, and or if your isopods are a shy, secretive species, then sure, you can do just fine with a plastic tub from the dollar store or something of that sort. If, on the other hand, you have a bold, active species of isopod and you want a high-end display enclosure that allows for excellent observation without even opening the enclosure, or maybe you're looking to house a variety of different types of small creatures beyond isopods, beyond tarantulas, a tarantula cribs enclosure just might be what you're looking for. After using these enclosures for several months, I decided I needed another tarantula crib. Before I tell you about that, I want to thank my patrons at Patreon. An important aspect of keeping animals is constantly striving to improve their care. My patrons help me do that. And one thing I do in return is answer their questions, both on the live streams 
and through direct messaging on Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron for as little as $1 a month, please click the link at the end of the video. Now, back to the new tarantula cribs enclosures. I bought a tarantula cube for a juvenile Scolopendra polymorpha centipede I was planning on purchasing. When the cube arrived, I was surprised and delighted to see that this tree house, which is the name given to this enclosure crafted for arboreal tarantulas, was included along with the tarantula cube when I opened the box. First, let's take a look at the tarantula cube. Like the smallest enclosure I had received before, it uses strong magnets to ensure good closure, but does not have a sliding lid that fits into grooves. That should not be a concern for anything I plan to keep in it. I love the visibility on those sides. I can see the network of tunnels the centipede has excavated. As long as I put the lid on correctly, I really don't have any concerns that the centipede will escape, and this will serve as an excellent home until the centipede gets quite a bit bigger. Now for the treehouse. I love the way it looks, and I immediately began running through the possibilities of what I could house in it. I decided to try it first for hatchling and young juvenile morning geckos. Morning geckos are tiny, and their hatchlings are even smaller, and they have a knack for finding their way through the smallest crevices. This enclosure, with its sliding magnetized door, seems to foil their every escape attempt as long as it is shut properly. I can see a lot of potential for various arthropod inhabitants in this enclosure as well, in addition to tarantulas. I'd like to thank Tarantula Cribs for sending these enclosures out for me to try them out, and I can't recommend them highly enough. There's a link in the description to their online shop if you'd like to check out what they have available. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets, with lots of isopod and other invertebrate content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell so that you don't miss my next video.